Hey guys, Mike here. So I gotta give a two, oh boy, oh boy. What a day in the market, and it was a crazy day. Like this was one of those days, a lot of you guys don't look at pre-market, so you don't really see what's going on on the charts, you know, in extended hours, but it was nuts, right? I'm gonna actually show this to you uh, about what happened, like after meta reports comes across, then we get the, uh, the employment data coming out and stuff. And understand for me, like I'm taking my son to school at 8, 10 every morning. So I already get my morning news brief out to the members. Markets are green, whatever, all good. And then when I get back 20 minutes later, I mean, things have just fallen off a cliff. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? And I'm going to show you that plus the employment data, which I think shocked the world, actually. I don't know if you were surprised by it. But uh, also getting to some charts, and I'm going to show you something uh, that's very important. It's called a three to five day rule, right? And I'm going to show you four different charts. Uh, so you're kind of careful on this because I see people and they'll they'll see this happen. They'll go, oh, I'm going to jump into this. And you're like, okay, hold on a second. Let me just show it to you because the picture is worth a thousand words. And you can use it going forward, okay? And um, I will say this. You guys asked a lot of good questions for Saturday's video. I went out, I found a video, as I'll tell you, make sure you watch this, at least this part of tomorrow's video. I found an interview for a gentleman who runs a hedge fund, obviously, but he's unique in the simple fact that he did a couple stints at the Fed. And the way he talks about the Fed and the balance sheet especially is like something I've never heard before. Well, the balance sheet part, I've heard the Fed part, but not the balance sheet part. So the way he's looking at it. And so, you know, I just want to make sure I bring that to you because a couple of you guys ask a certain question, like, you know, how in the world is this market going up and how, you know, they keep buying the Mag 7, which is really the Mag 4 now and all this stuff. And so this should answer your question, hopefully, on that and, and kind of make you things look at things a little differently, which is what I like to do. And so anyway, but if you didn't see, for those who don't use ETH on your uh, trading platforms, this is what happened when Meta announced, right? Crazy, which we're going to get into their earnings and stuff, but, you know, just exploded up over a percent and it held overnight, which really surprised me. But then... The employment data comes up and it drops down 0.83%. What's really funny though, and then of course it takes off uh, from there, but the level it dropped to was the exact point at where it took off, right? In extended trading hours when Meta actually announced. That's what was crazy, the level. I'm a nerd when it comes to that stuff, so I thought that was hilarious. And so this is the employment data, but I'm going to start off with this one first. This is jobs data of people who have been unemployed for 27 weeks or longer. You see it ticking up. I just want you to see it, okay? When's the last time we saw it really tick up like this? 07, 08, right? This, and so, again, not in recession territory, but I want you to see it is ticking up because that is a decent amount of time to be unemployed, and it continues to go up. Uh, started in mid-2023 and continues to go up now because I showed you all those layoff rights. But look at this right here. This was jobs created. Like, nobody expected this. The ex expectation was like 175,000, so it almost doubled. And not only that, they actually went back and revised the last two months up, not down, which absolutely stunned me. I don't know about you, because usually they're revising those numbers down. And so to, in tomorrow's video, I'm gonna address that as well, because I'm not gonna drag you down in a Friday video for that. But we'll talk about that one as well, and, and so you understand uh, what we're looking at here and how that could happen and stuff, okay? Now, what continues to happen, and no surprise, is the fact that you got regional banks dragging down right still dragging down and we hadn't seen this obviously a weekly loss like this since when it was around march when all those a uh, couple of regional banks started going under and the fed had to step in all that good stuff and of course you know it's like chum in the water for a short seller so of course they're piling in man they've made a boatload of money this week i mean i think it's like 1.05 billion just in the last two sessions for crown Loud. so they're really really trying to shove this thing down Will they start to pivot? We'll see. Because remember, rate cuts aren't supposed to come when they're supposed to come. That was a lot of this rally on regional banks because bonds should be going up, all this other stuff. And so we'll see if the yields start to drop again and rally bonds, which should rally regional banks. Now, I did find this meme funny. Amazon, Meta, and Apple all reported yesterday. And you can see Amazon and Meta looking mean and lean. And then there's, of course, Apple looking special. And of course, I know Apple, like people who own Apple are just laughing to the bank because Apple just keeps going up, right? But when you look at it, the reason why is, I mean, look at this earnings, right? Meta, look at the growth, right? You see the growth here on revenue, Amazon operating income, and then there's just Apple. It's just kind of like does this thing. I mean, it was better this time, but the growth, I, I got these little charts I put in the Discord. You can just see compared to the other guys, it's, it's laughable, but the fact is, they buy a lot of shares back. It's the most heavily owned stock in the world. 
And until it goes anywhere, people start selling, which ain't going to happen. Uh, it, it seems like, you know, whatever, doesn't matter what they do in earnings, it'll drop and then it just recovers and all that good stuff. So, I mean, it's just, it's, it's kind of amazing to watch a stock or a company really just uh, kind of like defy gravity in a way, right? Like it's all supposed to be about growth and the future and there's Apple going, no, it's not. It's about buying back shares, being the most heavily own stock in the world. That's what it's about for now. So, you know, and now speaking of the three to five day rule, check this chart out right here. And guys, before we continue, if you hit that thumbs up, I'd certainly appreciate it. It helps people find the video. And if you like the content, think about subscribing. And so this is meta. First of all, I want you to just take a second to appreciate this weekly candle because it's something you will hardly ever see, right? I mean, look at that weekly candle right there. That is unbelievable. And you go back to this chart and you won't see a weekly candle like that at all in here. You won't see many charts with a weekly candle like that. That's just to see a mega cap go up over 20% on an earnings call. Whoa. I mean, that's absolutely insane, right? And, you know, coming down to the daily, first of all, look at the MACD down there. Oh, boy. This thing now is almost what, 60% above its 200 moving average. So it's up there. I mean, it's it's definitely getting stretched. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, you know. But guess what? That's where so much money is going. That, that's just the way it is, you know. Uh, MACD's probably the highest it's ever been. I'm gonna pull up the RSI just for the fun of it. I mean, again, this is my, you know, this is the daily, but yeah, I mean, it's up there. You know, it was up there right there, beginning of 2023. That's where it was. And so, you know, we'll, we'll see how far they can hold it up here without coming down. Remember, gap ups don't feel as much as gap downs. The gap ups usually feel on crashes or corrections, that kind of stuff, okay? But that leads me to the three to five day rule, right? On gap ups or downs. Either way, when this happens, a lot of people want to jump into shorts or jump into longs when it gaps down, all that stuff. And that's fine. But just understand, normally a rule says that when it gap up, it normally takes, some people follow a three day rule, some people follow a five day rule. But when you look, that's a gap up, right? Before it chooses direction. So it's one, two, three, four, maybe, and then it chooses direction down, right? Don't mean it's got to come back down if you're gapping up, by the way. That's four days right there. Makes a directional move down, but then it starts to proceed back up. That's one, two, three, four, five. Makes a directional move down, as you can see. A uh, gap down right here. I'm going to zoom in so you can see this. That's one, two, three, four, five, and then a six day, it bounces up, right? So it makes a directional move. And if you keep going back counting, I mean, well, this is when we were crashing, so that kind of is a mess right there. That's a gap up. That's four days, and then it makes a move. Uh, this was a mess right here, so that's not even three to five day rule. Didn't hit it. So I'm saying it doesn't always have to hit it, but on most of these, you're going to see it's going to be three to five days. One, two, three, four, and then we make a move. Uh, up here, one, two, three, boom, down we go. And so it depends on what you're doing, of course. I mean, if you're trying to swing trade a day versus actually trying to go for a weekly or something, it's different. But I just want to let you know there's a three to five day. And you're not only going to see this on Meta. If we come over here, you can see Google obviously gap down after its earnings, right? And so, you know, this one came down, broke through that trend line right there because it's been this rising wedge forever. Bounced off the 100. Now it's above the 50 after recovering on this move up right here. So it's back above that trend line. But when you sit here, and the question is, is, you know, remember gap ups or gap downs feel more than gap ups. So is it going to come back through, start filling this gap up here or not, or continue to try to sell down? So we're at support now. But when you look, we're at day three now for it. When it gap downs, we get to see what direction it's going to make. But here you can see a gap down. It was three days. It made a move. Here it was four days, I believe, before it made a move. Uh, a consistent, like, really directional move. And so, you know, Google's doing the same thing right there. You can go in the other gaps. You'll see pretty much similar to the same thing. Again, it doesn't always happen. That's five days on that gap down right there. When you go to Amazon, what do we got? Big gap up. And I was talking to one of the members. I said, I wonder, because remember we talked about how hard this was going to be get through and end up gapping right above it, right? So now the question you got is, is it going to come down, feel this, or is it just going to bounce right off the top of that? And I'll pull the volume profile in a minute. But this is another one of those. When you look at it, now you got the gap up. When we start looking, you go, okay, that's one, two, three, four, five, trade sideways, and then goes. That one's one, two, three, and then we head down. So again, that three to five day rule usually plays in. Some people do three, some people do five, some people do nothing, obviously. You know, this is one of those ones, one, two, three, see you later. All right? It moves. So you gotta figure out, and that's what I'm saying. Just because something gaps up don't mean it's gonna start coming down, right? This took like a week before it started rolling over. And so you just have to understand, and right now it's in what? An upward bullish trend. So you would think 
Maybe you get some kind of sell off liquidity grab down before moving up, but you also got to remember this one right here is not at all time highs either, right? The other ones were at all time highs. Google was, Meta has been just setting all time high every other day. It seems like this one's still 10% away. Okay. So, and the reason I kind of bring this up is I hear a lot of people say, man, I'm going straight into a short and maybe you're right. I hope you make a million dollars, but I'm just trying to, you know, I guess put a little bit of wisdom on you say, you know, maybe look at the three to five days, you know, and look at Tesla for example, as well now on that chart, what's been going on now, obviously I'm pulling up the volume profile for you. You can see a lot of volume here. That's why I said it's going to be tough to get through unless it just gaps above and totally misses it. This is a weekly candle on the daily. There's nothing there. And so will it come down? That would be a good bounce point. If it does a lot of support there. Now looking at Tesla, as you can see, you're going to hear about this death cross. That's when the 50 crosses the 200. Don't really mean a whole lot of much of nothing. Sometimes it does. You can see there's a death cross right here. You end up getting a pop up. It basically just does what Tesla does, right? Up 5%, up 3%, down 4%, down 5%, up 5%. So you didn't really get a huge plunge right there. And that was what, in 2022 right there. And so, you know, even when you see it cross up, it's not a, in the immediate term, the first couple of weeks, there's not a whole lot going on here. Okay. And so, but it does have, what does that mean? It's bearish when it happens for sure. So make sure you watch that. I want to make you aware of it. We'll go into the detailed chart more on Sunday. Apple, you know, as Apple goes, the market goes, right? What happened? Ends up having what kind of Apple earnings you can get, hardly any growth, all that stuff. I mean, just not that good, guided down, whatever, not as much as they thought it was going to be, but it doesn't matter. Broke the 200, you're like, oh, this is it. Nope, hit that trend line right there, bounce back above it. That gives us our third touch on that trend line, continues the wedge right there. And when we pull up on the lower time frames, you can see it regained, it popped right up. As soon as it hit that trend line, boom, right back above the 200 and the 100. And so, you know, I, always, I just laugh at the earnings because they just, there's not much going on there. They're going to sell the same iPhone in a few months, maybe, you know, and all that good stuff. But when you pull out, what's this one doing? It's just simply wedging. It's still it's going to be wedging up right there. And so if it finally does find, and so if it finally does break that trend line, uh, maybe you finally get a move down. Obviously we're setting nosebleed, you know, levels or whatever, because S and P, what was it? 0.3% away from 5,000. Uh, from making it to 5,000 and you know they love to get these indexes and stocks to round numbers uh, before you get a pullback so it'll be interesting to see if they don't reach that uh, but when you look at the day I mean again equal weighted S&P was red QQEW is like 0.35% green and there you got the Q's up 1.7% S&P's up over percent IWM half percent down uh, what was the the dollar's green, all the yields are up between two and a half to four percent. So yeah, it was just a very, very the VIX was all over the place. So it was just a very strange day today. So we'll get to see. And again, it's weekly options expiration on Friday. So you know, we'll see what Monday brings and stuff to us. But you know, let me know what you think. Stuff. Uh, I will be surprised if next week doesn't bring some kind of sell-off. I'm not saying some massive sell-off, I'm just saying some kind of sell down to grab liquidity before trying to push to five thousand. It would make sense, but Again, we'll we'll find out and have fun. That's for sure. It'll be another volatile week. But the good thing is, I mean, we'll go through the detailed charts on Sunday, but the economic news is way lighter. Okay. And then tomorrow I'll answer all your questions and, and make sure you watch that. Cause it's, it's, hopefully it answers a lot of your questions and it lets you understand and look at the market just in a different way. Hopefully uh, when I show you the data and stuff. So anyway, hope you got some out of it. Please hit that like and subscribe button on your way out and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great weekend.